time value of money before? No. Not yet. No. No, no, not, not yet. yet. No. Not yet. So, no. Okay. So nobody, not not to single one of you have uh, heard the term time value of money. Okay. I've heard it. You. Okay. Who's 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 speaking? Uh, Hartanto. Hartanto. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I I I couldn't see who's speaking yet. Hartanto, uh, where did you hear the term? Is it in school or did you learn it by yourself or where? In school. In school, okay, in high school, yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. do you still remember what, what's the idea of time value of money? What is it about? Um, if I'm not mistaken. Share? Yeah. Uh, the value of the money decrease um, between time. So, for example, like for next month, the value of a thousand rupiah is decreased. So basically, you're saying the value of money decreases over time. Yeah. Okay, that's. Yeah. Okay, anything else you still remember besides that? Or is it the main uh, topic that you no. still remember? Anything else? No. No. Okay. That's that's fine. Yeah. But basically, your your answer about uh, over time the value of money decreases is actually one of the conclusion that I put on the last slide. So you're actually correct. Yeah. You actually still remember about one of the main ideas, one of the main important points related to this time value of money concept. Okay, but perhaps your friends have not heard uh, this concept. So this is going to be their first time. And perhaps for you, this is also a, a refreshment yeah, of what you studied. Okay. Um, later, yeah, when we uh, go through the materials, uh, we'll do some, just a simple practice. Okay, so later I want you to try your calculator. Uh, anyway, do you have calculators? Because as a uh, accounting as finance students, you you must have a calculator. Okay, so if you have not had any calculators with you, uh, please uh, get one yeah before the new semester next week starts because you're going to need it in accounting and finance courses. Yeah, you're going to see some calculations. Okay, let's continue, yeah. I'm going to start uh, our discussion today, yeah, with the list of yeah, the outcomes, yeah. Usually, uh, at the start of the session, uh, just imagine yourself, you are now in a lecture class. Usually, the lecturer will start the class with the list of outcomes, learning outcomes. Okay, learning outcomes are the the points that are expected. Yeah, that is um, sorry, the points that we expect you to be able to understand at, at the end of the session. Okay, so here is here are our three topics for today. Yeah. The first one is the concept of compound interest. Okay, so now I'm using the, what do you call it there? Uh, highlighter or whatever, yeah. This is one of the feature in Zoom, so it can help the lecturers to point out some words, yeah, to emphasize some points, yeah. So the first one is the concept of compound interest. And we're going to see 
to discuss a little bit about future value and also the present value. Yeah, just an introduction. Yeah, we're not going to be too much detail for now. Yeah. Okay, so these are our three uh, topics. Yeah, that we're going to cover uh, in today's session. Okay, since only Hatato uh, said that he already learned the time value of money, so I'm assuming none of you have heard or are familiar with the term compound interest, future value, and also present value. Yeah, so I'm assuming none of you have heard these three terms before. Yeah, so it's okay if you are, uh, you're still not familiar with this, but by the end of the day session, hopefully you'll get a brief understanding, brief overview of what's actually the term means. Okay, I'm going to start with this image. Do you know what image is this? What picture is this? Okay, anyone? America's There's Got Talent. America's Got Talent, yeah? That's true. So if you see there's an A-G-T abbreviation there, it stands for America's Got Talent. So why am I showing you this picture? Yeah, why am I showing you this image? Okay. Anyone here watching AGT? Currently they're running for season, I don't know, season maybe 16 or 15, I don't remember. But I think they're still running now uh, in the US. Yeah. Uh, Anyone I, watching I, this? Watch. Yes? Me. Oh, yes. let's see. Okay. Uh, in what stage are currently AGT is in? Is it a quarter final or semi final? What is it? Hi, to be honest, I'm not I'm not really sure. I only watch uh, clips on YouTube. All clips on YouTube, yeah. Uh, when you watch the YouTube clips, uh, do you usually? Um, I'm not sure whether the you can see the the statement yeah at the end of the YouTube clips, but uh, yeah. if you watch it in in um, like uh, cable TV or uh, things like that, at the end of the show, yeah when all the acknowledgement appears, usually there is a statement saying this. Okay, so at, at the end of, the, of, the, of that day's uh, session, usually they will show a message like this. Yeah, please take, take a look at the statement first. The one that I'm pointing out using yellow uh, marker now. So take, take a look at the statement first. The price, yeah, price money, because at the end of the season, we, have, we, we will have a winner, yeah. Uh, the price for the winner, the total price is $1 million, okay. $1 million, how? How many rupiah is it now? One million dollars. Anybody is aware of the exchange rate of US 15, dollar? Fif, fif, 15 what? 15,000. One dollar is 15,000. One dollar, sorry, who's speaking? I cannot see who's speaking. Uh, Brigitta. Oh, Brigitta. 15,000 rupiah, yeah. Around 15,000 yeah. rupiah for one dollar. So you multiply it with one million dollar how much you would get 16 million oh oh wait 14 14 trillion 15 yeah. trillion yeah. 15, yeah. Let, let's 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 just round it to fifteen thousand laya to to make the calculation simpler fifteen thousand rupiah you multiplied by one million dollars so how much rupiah is that 1.5 trillion. 1.5 trillion. trillion. Are you sure? 1.5 trillion? Are 
Are you sure? Part one point five trillion. Okay, it's it's a very simple uh math, yeah. How many 15, zeros do you have? Fifteen billion. Fifth. Oops, sorry, sir. Nine nine zeros. So fifteen billion. So fifth, yeah. So you have nine zeros, right? So one million dollar. Uh, you multiply it by fifteen thousand rupiah. Okay. So you got nine billion. Uh, sorry, nine nine zeros. It means fifteen billion rupiah. Yeah, or lima belas miliar rupiah lah. Yeah, lima belas miliar or fifteen billion rupiah. But don't get uh, too excited first, yeah. Don't get don't get uh, to be excited uh, too much excited because the prize money comes with a uh, condition. What's that? Comes with a condition, yeah. So what's the condition? It is payable and a financial annuity. It's okay if you not if you don't understand what's annuity and so on, yeah, because uh, this is just an opening uh, slide. Okay, payable over forty years. That's the first option, actually. So actually, the winner gets to choose, yeah, how they're going to receive the one million dollar prize money. That's the first, yeah. Uh, they will receive it over 40 years yeah so they will receive an equal sum of money over 40 years so if i divide one million dollars with 40 years how much will i get okay one million divided by 40 how much is it come on use your calculator or just use microsoft excel if you don't have your calculator with you. 25,000. 25,000, yes, thank you. So the first option is for the winner to receive. So I'm writing something on the screen, yeah? So uh, you can see. They can receive 25,000 per year. Yeah, I'm sorry if my uh, annotation is not that good because I don't have stylus pen and so on. So I'm using my uh, mouse to do this. Okay. That's the first option to receive $25,000 per year for the next 40 years. Okay. What's option two? Okay, so you, you see the word or here. Yeah. Or means an alternative. Okay. Or the contestant may choose to receive the present cash value of such annuity okay so the second option actually uh, means a contestant the winner can get the money now yeah now but they will not get the whole 1 million dollars they will get way smaller than that if they choose the second option. Yeah, why why is that the case? Yeah, we'll see later. So this is just um, um, opening an opening to help yourself. Yeah, uh, to help yourself uh, get familiar. Yeah, about this uh, some some of the terms. And the fact that it's actually happening in real, real life. Yeah, for example, in the AGT case. Okay. At the end of the session, yeah, we're going to go back to our AGT example. Okay, so this is just um, what would you call it? Yeah? Uh, prologue, yeah, opening uh, story, yeah, opening story. Okay, so we're going back to this later. Yeah, but this is just to give you an idea that this topic is actually there in practice. Okay, and one of the 
ways that we can decide which option do I have to choose? Is it 40 years or now? Yeah, we can use the concept of time value of money. Okay, uh, if, if anyone has any questions or uh, you want me to repeat something, just say it out loud, yeah. Let's take a look at a short video, yeah, before we go into much detail of this topic. Oops, oops, sorry. This is a short video. Um, Can you hear the voice? Can you listen the YouTube video? No. No. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I forgot to turn on the... Wait. Okay, wait. I forgot to check the box in the share screen. Yes, this one. Okay, let me go back. What is the time value of money? So now you can listen, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll put it in the full screen mode then. Presented by WallStreetSurvivor.com. The time value of money is a basic concept in finance that shows that a single dollar is worth more in the future than in the present. Here's Natalie. Natalie has a beautiful singing voice, enters a vocal competition, and wins. As a prize, she's awarded $1 million. She can choose to receive a single lump sum check for $1 million or $1,025,000 in a year from now. Natalie isn't sure what to do. That extra $25,000 sounds nice, but is it too nice? Natalie is a vocalist, not a businesswoman, so she asks her friend Linda for advice. Linda is not easily tricked and is quick to tell her that it all comes down to interest. Suppose Natalie could put that million dollars in the bank and earn 5% per year in interest. At the end of the year, her winnings will grow from $1 million to $1,050,000. By taking the money today, rather than in one year, Natalie will make an extra $25,000. Not too shabby. The key to the time value of money is to remember that over time, your money makes money. How much it makes depends on the interest rate or return you can expect to receive. This is also known as the discount rate. The decision to take the money today or in the future depends entirely on the discount rate, the percent you think your money will grow. For example, had Natalie thought she could only make 1% on her money instead of 5%, then her total after one year would be $1,010,000, and it would have been better off to wait the year. To learn more about the time value of money, head over to wallstreetsurvivor.com. Okay, so the video is a bit similar, yeah, it's a competition and so on, but the term of the price is different. Yeah, it's either $1 million now or $1,025,000 one year from now. Yeah, but basically it, it shares a similar issue in our AGT um, slide. Yeah, we have two options of receiving the price. Which one should we choose? Okay, so before we take a look at compound interest and so on, I just want to start with a, sim uh, a concept known as simple interest. Okay. Simple interest means uh, if you have money and you put it in, let's say you deposit it in a bank, yeah, uh, you will get interest on that money, okay? So here we imagine that our money will be invested somewhere else, not just sit there on, uh, on your uh, house, okay? So you, you deposit your money in the bank with the hope that you will get interest, yeah? You will get, uh, you'll receive interest, yeah? Interest here means uh, bunga, okay? The interest is, earned or the interest is uh, based on the principal 
Yeah, the term principal means the initial money that you have. Okay, pokok. In Indonesia, we use the term pokok, yeah, and bunga. Okay. So let's say you deposit. Uh, let Let's just see an example here, yeah. Here you imagine you have a principal of one hundred dollars. So this is your principal. You started uh, your investment, yeah, with one hundred dollar in your hand, and you put it somewhere else. Yeah, let's say you put it in the bank. You deposit it in a bank, okay, and the interest is six percent per year okay interest is always stated on a percentage basis okay six percent okay and for this example imagine that you're putting your money for three years yeah for three years okay so the question is how much interest that you will get in total after three years yeah, and how much money you will have at the end of year three? That's the question. Okay, so I want you to imagine. Yeah, you put your money in, and at the end of each year, you have to find out how much interest do you earn. And at the end of year three, in total, how much money do I get after I invest my money uh, for three years? Okay, so let's see how it goes. Yeah. Okay, first year, the interest is $6, okay. Can anyone uh, figure out how to get this $6? $100 times 6%. 6%. Yep, of course, it's very easy, a simple math. You have $100, the interest is 6%, and then your interest at the end of year one is $6. Okay. So uh, here you got um, uh, an idea of how to calculate interest. You need to just multiply the rate of interest with the principal. That's year one, yeah. If I'm asking you how much interest is it going to be in second year and in third year, will the answer still be the same, $6, or will it change? Change. Change, why? Because you multiply it, it in the year before. Increases. Yeah, because yeah. it's... Okay. The rate uh, stays the same. The, sorry. The rate stays the same, yeah. It is 6%. But you said yeah. the interest in second year will, will be different than 6, yeah. So, okay. Jeremy, if I'm asking you to calculate the second year interest, how are we going to do that? Mm, just multiply $100 times 6% yeah. interest times 2. Times 2. Okay, let's see, yeah? Eh, why is that changing? Sorry. The answer is still $6. I'm not saying your answer is wrong. But here we are still at sim what is called a simple interest. Actually, your answer is compound interest. It's our later, uh, our next oh, topic. Okay. okay. Simple interest means interest earned only on principal. Okay, so we are not adding the principal with the interest earned on last year. That's a different concept. That's the next concept. Okay, if we're using simple interest, the interest per year will stay the same because our principal is 100. That's our initial money. So at the end of year three, my total interest will be 18. Yeah, six, six, and six. Yeah, you add those three. And, sorry, and the amount of money that I will have at the end of year three will be 100 and two. Hundred, sorry, a hundred and eighteen, yeah. 
a hundred principal added by my interest that I will get 118 at the end of year three. That's called simple interest. Okay. Anybody got any questions yet for this simple interest? Okay, no, I'll move on, yeah? Okay. But usually what happened uh, is not simple interest, yeah, as Jeremy and also was also Brigitte, if I'm not mistaken, answered uh, the amount of interest will, diff will be different. Now. Actually, that's the concept of compound interest. Yeah, and that's uh, this is the concept that uh, you will use later. Yeah. Okay. So the interest is not only based on the initial principle. Okay, but the interest will be based on the interest added by uh, added to the principle at the beginning of the year and so on. So I think it is best to illustrate this using uh, the example. Yeah, I don't want you to get caught up with the definition and so on. Yeah, let's just see how it goes in practice. Still, yeah, still the same um, exercise. We have $100, still six years, uh, sorry, 6%, uh, three years. But this time, we're going to apply the concept of compound interest. Yeah. So in year one, in year one, the interest is 6% multiplied by 100. So for year one, nothing is different. The interest is $6, just like in simple interest, because this is only our first year. Okay, so what's the difference? The difference is now our prince, what we call principal here is not the initial $100, okay, but the initial $100 added by the interest that we earn at the end of year one. Okay, so now my new balance, my new principal is 106. Yeah, where do I get that from? My initial investment, 100, added with my $6 interest in year one. In Indonesian term, usually we, we use the term bunga majemuk or bunga berbunga. Yeah. If you have ever heard bunga berbunga or bunga majemuk, it means compound interest in English. Okay. So interest earned on your principal and interest. Okay. So for second year, let's see. Okay, for second year, the interest is not six anymore. It is 6.36. Okay. How do I get 6.36, anyone? How do I get 6.36? Can anyone? 6% uh, multiplied by $106. Yeah. Okay, 6% our interest rate, yeah. Multiplied by our new principal at the end of year one, which is 106. So you see now our principal is no longer 100, but 100 added by the interest. So that's why the interest will increase, yeah, compared to simple interest. Okay. And my second year principal at the end of second year is going to be 112.36. Yeah. Simply just add 106 by the interest. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's a bit messy. Yeah, I'll just cancel that. Okay. And the same principle applies for year three. Yeah, 
the interest at the end of year three, you'll see 6.74. Yeah, which you get by multiplying the rate 6% by principal in year two, 112 and so on. And then you get 6.74, okay. So at the end of year three, let's see how much interest we get, 19.1, yeah, 19.1. You still remember in the simple interest, how much is the total interest in the previous slide when we're using simple, 18. Okay, so if we're using simple interest, yeah, we're going to compare this with eight, oops, 18. Okay, perhaps you comment, uh, you have comments, it, it doesn't differ by much, yeah, only $1.1 over three years. Yeah, that's correct. But we only talk about $100 amount of money. Yeah, imagine if you're putting millions yeah, million dollars, uh, the amount of interest will be different uh, by quite much. Okay. So up until this slide, do you get an idea now? What's the difference between compound and simple interest? If you still confused, you got any questions, just feel, feel free to ask, yeah. This is also this, this this also applies when you have a lecture. Once the lecturer finished explaining, if you're still not sure, just just ask. Okay, we're more than happy to answer your questions. Okay, still no question. Okay, let's move on then. So. If you remember, that's actually our first uh, point, your compound interest, yeah? Our second point is about future value. And our third point is about present value. Actually, future and present value, once, once you understand either one, I think you automatically understand the other one because they're basically the same concept, but you're looking at it at a different point of view, okay? Let's see future value. Okay. So here, the name already suggests itself, future. We want to know the amount of the money somewhere in the future. We want to know how much our money will be in a future date. Okay, and here we're using compound interest, so we're no longer using simple interest. Yeah, simple interest is there just to give you an introduction, uh, to give you the basic concept, but usually what we're going to use uh, forward is compound interest. Okay, so future value is the amount of sum will grow into a certain amount, a certain number of years when compounded at a specific rate and so on. <clears throat> Uh, I'm giving you a formula here, so I'm boxing it. Yeah, it's it's a formula. Yeah, it's a rumus. Okay, but I don't want you to be overwhelmed. Oh, okay, I'm dealing with another formula here. Uh, you can use it. You, it's it's uh it's actually logic. Yeah. So if you don't prefer to use the formula. That's okay, but uh, the, 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 the main point here is you understand the logic or the, the, the argument. Why do I have to use this kind of formula? Yeah, we can also use Microsoft Excel if you want. Uh, I'm going to show you later how to do this in Excel. Yeah, okay. As with formulas, we need to understand the abbreviation first, yeah? So here we have F, V, N, or you could use any other sim uh, abbreviation that you want, but uh, here we're using F, V, N. F, V, N means this is the future value that I want to know, okay? P, 
PV. PV is the present value. Present, yeah, the, as the name suggests, present means now. They are current. Nilai sekarang. Okay. R. R is the interest rate. N is the period or number of years. Let's say three years, five years, and so on. Okay. Let's see an example. Okay, I think. Okay. Still using the previous uh, illustration. Yeah, we have one hundred dollars, but now we we only have two years in perspective. So we're, we're not going to use three years, but two years. The interest rate is still the same, 6%. Okay. I'm going to apply this into our formula here. Yeah, so first you need to identify PV. PV is how much is the money that I have now. Uh, now I have 100. Okay, so 100 is my PV. How much is the R, the interest rate? Oh, interest rate, it says here it is 6%. How much is the N, number of years? Yeah, N is two years. Yeah, so once you got that cleared up, just put in the numbers into the formula or the equation. Okay, so I'm putting it like this. Remember our the formula is this, yeah, and this is the numbers that are plugged in into the equation. 100 multiplied by 1 plus 6% or 0 0.06 to the power of 2. Yeah, pangkat dua, yeah. And then you'll get... 112.36, yeah. So that's your answer. If I now have 100 and I put it in an investment that gives me 6% interest over two years, <clears throat> then at the end of year two, I will get 112.36, okay? If you notice, uh, if you relate this, With our previous slide of compound interest, you see, do, do you see that the number matches up? They have had the 12.36, okay? But we're not doing it step by step, right? We just put it, uh, put, put the numbers into some equation and the result comes up. So we don't have to do this step by step, yeah, year per year calculation, because now we have a shortcut to do that. Yeah. We have a formula, we have a rumus, yeah. yeah. Sorry, this one, okay. So perhaps if the time horizon is only two years, three years, you don't mind to do it year by year, yeah. But if you're talking about 10, 20 years, yeah, it's going to take forever if you have to do it, you know, step by step, one by one yearly. So that's why we have a shortcut. We have a uh, formula to simplify our life. Okay, as I said before, uh, you can use Excel to help you in calculating this. Okay, so let's see, uh, I, sorry. Let's see how we do this in Excel. So if you have your Microsoft Excel open, you could uh, follow uh, my example here, yeah, so that you can get an idea of how this works in, in Excel. Okay, so I'm now sharing Microsoft Excel here. Yeah? Let, let me know if you cannot see my Excel, yeah? Okay, as Excel, if you want to do some, calculate something, you start with what? What symbol that do you have to put first if you want to calculate things in Excel? 
Sama equal dengan. Sign? Yes, sama dengan. Oh, equal sign, of course. That's good, equal. Okay, so now what we want to do is uh, to calculate the future value. Okay, in Excel, the future value is uh, abbreviated using FV. Yeah, so you could see here, yeah, in the Excel, returns the future value, blah, blah, blah. Just to make sure yeah, that you're typing in the correct uh, uh, correct formula, F V. Okay. And I'll open my bracket there. And Excel will guide you into what variable that you have to input. Okay. What should I input first? Okay, if you can see here in my Excel, it says rate. Rate is interest rate. Yeah. In our example, how much is the rate? The interest rate? Six percent. Six percent, of course. Uh, be careful, don't just put six. Yeah. You have to put percentage like this or use the decimal format. Six percent is equal to zero point zero six. Yeah. I usually prefer to use decimal, but if you want to put percentage, uh, I think you can do that as well. Yeah, rate 6%. And then comma, okay. per, n per, and per is our n, uh, our period. How much, uh, sorry, how, how many years are we talking about? Two years, put two there, period. And then what's next? Uh, the next variable that we have to input here is PMT. But for now, uh, since we have not discussed a lot PMT yet, yeah, just put zero on it. Yeah, perhaps now you're not understanding that clearly. Why do we have to put zero? What is a PMT? Later you will learn this kind of thing. Yeah, but for now we're not talking about that yet because this is just an introduction. So I'm going to put zero on that PMT. <clears throat> and then the next one is PV. PV is the present value. It is the $100 that we have now. And if you take a look at my Excel, it also has one last component, type. But again, I'm not going to discuss the type uh, at this point, yeah, because um, you learn this in finance course. Okay, so I'm going to just close my bracket here. Okay, and then I'll press enter so that Excel will give me the result. Okay, you can see here, okay, I'm going to show the decimal. For, the mo for a moment, just ignore the bracket sign. Yeah, just focus on the number. Yeah, the bracket sign has its own meaning. Yeah, but uh, again, this is just an introduction. I will not uh, explain about that at this point. Yeah, just take a look at the number, 112.36. 112.36, so that's basically what we have, we have uh, calculated before. Yeah, but Excel can do it as well. Okay. Uh, this is just a graph yeah, showing you about the growth of money invested, okay? So we have $100 again, yeah? Imagine we have a principal of $100. Interest at 6% again. But now we're talking about a longer time, which is 20 years, yeah? As you can see here in the graph, yeah, we have three colors. The blue ones is my initial investment of 100. So this is the, 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 the first uh, uh, awal. This is the initial principle, okay, $100. <clears throat> and then the blue, uh, sorry, the green one here, interest earned on the initial investment. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Can you please mute that? I don't know who that is. Okay. The the green one here is actually showing us the effect of simple interest. Yeah, interest are on principle only. Yeah. And then the purple one, interest on interest, as I said before, bunga berbunga. Yeah. This is the additional money that you get because of the compound interest. Interest earned on your interest. Bunga majemuk. Okay. So you see here the growth of your money. Yeah. At the end of year 20, you'll get, I don't know how much is this. Yeah. More, more than $300. Lah. Yeah. At the end of year 20. Uh, at 6%. Considering $100 as your initial investment. Okay, so this is just an illustration, a visualization of uh, our money will grow because we earn interest. Yeah, the interest is based on the principal and also based on the interest itself, which is called compound interest. Okay, any questions until this? You've been very quiet. Any questions? <laughs> I still have to turn the light. Okay, the light. Okay, if not, we'll see the next one, yeah, present value. If you understand, if you can follow this future value thing calculation, uh, I think I can guarantee you can understand the present value as well. Because we're using the same formula, but we're just twisting something. Yeah, we're just uh, moving things around in the formula. Okay. So uh, recall that in future value, what we want to know is the amount of money in the future. Okay. The opposite of that is present value. Yeah, where I want to know how much is my money now, currently. Yeah, present. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going back here first, yeah, so that you understand how much is the money. Eh, where does the formula come from? Okay, take a look again at this formula that we used to calculate future value here. Yeah. Okay. So when we discuss future value, what we want to calculate was the FV. Uh, this is our main interest. But with present value, what I want to know is this one and the one I'm circling, PV. Okay. So how do I calculate my PV? I just need to rearrange my equation, right? So I want my PV to be my, my main interest. So I need to isolate 1 plus r to the power of n here, to the left-hand side of the equation. Okay. What happens if I move a multiplication to the other side of the equation? Can anybody still remember basic math? If I move, yeah, you need to divide it. Yeah, You need to divide it because it moves to a different side of the equation. So it's going to be uh, divided by one plus r to the power of n will be equal my pv. So that's basically it. I'm just rearranging my, my uh, equation. One plus r goes to the left-hand side and that's my formula. Okay, okay, so I'm continue, I'm continuing to this PV slide, yeah? Here, yeah, so you'll get the idea of how this formula was derived, okay? Yeah, as I said before, the formula is similar, okay, but this time it is PV that we want to know. Okay, let's see an example. What will be the present value of 500 <coughs> to be received 10 years from today if the discount rate is $6? 
Okay. So uh, as a means to help you, I'm drawing something here. Let's just call it a timeline. Later in finance course, probably you also uh, see this, this timeline again. Yeah. When we talk about present value, it means as of now. Yeah. Here. At, usually we use the, the, the symbol zero. Zero means now. Yeah. T equals zero. Okay, let's say that at the end of 10 years, yeah, here, 10 years, I'm going to put 10 here to indicate year 10. At the end of year 10, somebody will give you 500. At the end of year 10, uh, discount rate is still 6%. So now my interest is I want to know. How much is the value of 500 now? Yeah, 500 is 10 years from now. Will it be 500 now? Of course not. Yeah, because as as Hartanto uh, yeah uh, mentioned earlier, the the value of money decreases over time. Yeah, it means that if I have one million rupiah now. Yeah, perhaps I can buy uh, um, four clothes uh, or four, uh, I don't know, or probably only one pair of shoes if it is expensive. Ten years from now, if I have one million dollar, uh, sorry, one million rupiah, what can I buy? Probably I can only buy one clothes. The value of money decreases over time because of the inflation. Yeah, so five hundred dollars ten years from now will not be equal to $500 now. Yeah, so I want to know how much is the value now. Okay. So that's the idea, yeah? Okay, I'm going to just put the numbers into the equation that we saw earlier. PV 500 divided by one plus R to the power of 10 and so on. Okay, so the final answer that you got is 279. Okay, so that means, yeah, the value of money, $500 10 years from now, will be equal to only 279 as of now at 6% rate. Yeah, so you can see it's almost just half the value of what you will get at the end of year 10. At 6%, if you change the discount rate, if you change the years, of course, the numbers will change. Okay. So again, let's see uh, if we want to do this in Excel, how we're going to do that. Okay, I'm showing my <coughs> Excel file. Now my interest is the present value. So I'll start with, again, the equal sign and present value. So the symbol for present value is PV. <coughs> okay, I'll open my bracket. Rate, oh, rate is 6%. Period, 10 years, yeah, because we're talking about the year 10. Again, uh, for now, just ignore PMP, put zero. FV, FV is the future value, the $500 that we're going to receive at the end of year 10, right? So I'm going to put 500 there. Yeah. Type, just ignore that for now. Close my bracket. Uh, I press enter. And then I'll get 279 point something, yeah. Uh, here it is rounded, yeah, it is rounded, but the full amount, the exact amount is point something. Okay. If you want to use your calculator, it's also fine. Make sure you know how to put power of 10, yeah, pangkat 10. Make, make, make sure how uh, you know how to put power into your calculator. Okay, okay any questions? Uh, up until this, because after this, we're going to do a sh uh, an exercise. Let's see whether you can uh, understand what we've discussed so far.
Any questions before we start uh, activities? <coughs> okay, let's see uh, whether you got a good grasp of this topic. Yeah. Okay, before we do the activities, I want you to have the calculator ready or as uh, I said before, you could also use Excel because you're going to need this to do your calculation. Okay. Uh, go to this address, menti.com. Okay, menti.com. And it's asking you to input the code, input the code, this one, 404462. Okay, menti.com, input the code 404462. And then you need to enter your name. Yeah, enter your name and then just wait until I start. Okay. You will be given a, we only have a five questions. It's just uh, uh, to, to, to check your understanding. Um, if uh, there's a time limit for each question. Okay, so if you got, uh, if you answer your, uh, if you answer, um, quickly you'll get more points and so on yeah so the points will be calculated automatically by the by mentimeter okay anyone has entered uh has has anyone entered the menti.com input your name and the code let me know if you have any difficulty i'm typing the the code in the chat box yeah in case you, you miss out because I need to stop sharing for a while. Yeah, so the code is oops. Eh, I should do that to everyone. So if you if you miss out the code, uh, please check the chat box. Yeah, because I need to stop sharing for a moment and to prepare the questions first. Okay, we're still waiting.
get up so I have guys. Get ready for the third question.
Okay, so that's the last question. Then let's see how's the final uh, leaderboard is showing. Okay, who's the winner? Okay, Madeline. Madeline is the first is in the first place okay congratulations madeline but unfortunately i don't have any price yeah so uh but at least if the price is you'll be way um you'll already have a good start in finance related courses yeah this is just uh, this uh, just an introduction but at least uh you're ahead okay um I think we don't have time to discuss. That's okay. This is just a practice. Yeah, just a practice um, about the concept that we discussed earlier on about time value of money. I still have a few more slides just to finish up. Okay. Sorry about the sound. Yeah. In my laptop, the sound is very low. Yeah, it's uh, it's not that loud, but I don't know. Maybe in, in, in your laptop, uh, the sound is very loud. Yeah. But if, if I don't put sound, it's going to be, you know, garing, yeah? it's a bit uh, uh, not fun, you know, just waiting in silence for the next question. Yeah? But yeah, I don't know, yeah, it has its own, its own downsides anyway. Okay, uh, I'll just go through some of the examples of practical usefulness of this time value of money concept. Uh, you could use this concept when you uh, want to compare investment alternatives. So you have a, uh, a few options and you're not sure which option do I have to choose? Yeah, you could use this uh, time value of money to help you in deciding which, of, which investment you have to choose yeah, to maximize your money, of course, yeah. Or uh, you have a decision about buying a house, yeah, for example, how many years? okay before i have enough money to buy my dream house for example yeah or uh, the question of should i pay off my house now yeah. should i uh, uh pay off my debt my uh, uh, debt to buy my house or should i use the money instead to invest it somewhere else yeah or about education okay how much money do you have to put into your, perhaps your child's or your children's education fund so that you will have the money ready when it is time already? Yeah, perhaps you'll, you'll, you'll save your money for another 20 years or 50 years and by the time your children will need to go to the college, uh, you will have the uh, fund ready, okay. Um, purchasing items or purchasing goods. Uh, for example, is it better to pay now, bayar lunas sekarang, yeah? Or should I just um, uh, buy it on account, yeah, credit, yeah? And then I use the money, uh, I, I put the money in, a, uh, in an investment alternative and then get the interest and so on. Yeah, so you could uh, also use time value of money concept in helping you to decide those kind of decisions. Oh, about pension fund. Yeah, I want to retire at 50, for example. By, by that time, I want to have $1 million. Okay, how much do I have to uh, uh, put into my pension fund so that I can get $1 million at the end of, um, uh, by the time I'm 50 years old, for example. Okay. Okay, going back to our, uh, sorry, uh, before going back to our AGT, yeah, some of the, Lessons learned, yeah, uh, in this section, okay. Money loses value, yeah. This is the one that was mentioned earlier on that happened, though, due to inflation, yeah. The value of money decreases over time because of inflation. Uh, this is an example of inflation, yeah. In in the year of two thousand, have you? Oh, you're not born yet, yeah. At two thousand, I think. Most of you are born in 2003, 2002, perhaps. Yeah, I don't know. But in 2000, you're not born yet. Yet, in 2000, back then, yeah, 20 years ago, 
$100 can give you 40 Big Macs, yeah, uh, McDonald's Big Macs, about 2.5 each, yeah. In 2018, so 18 years after, the same amount of money, $100, can only give you 28 Big Macs of McDonald's. So you can see the price increase there. Yeah, so that's an example of uh, how your money loses value over time due to inflation. Second lesson, money, your money grows over time because of the interest. Yeah, if you still remember the graph that I showed you, yeah, you see uh, an increase in your money because you earn interest. Yeah, so you start with, I don't know, how much is that, uh, 1,000 or whatever. Over time, you expect your money will grow into much and much and much more. Yeah, that's the that's the that's the two main uh, lessons that we got from uh, our short introduction about time value money. Uh, going back to the AGT example, yeah, you still remember the first uh, option to receive the prize money? Anyone still remember what's the first option in AGT to receive your money? Pension annuity over forty years. Okay, financial annuity over forty years. Yeah, so it means you get $25,000 each year for the next 40 years. Yeah, second option is to receive the present value uh, of the money now. Yeah, so if you choose the first option, 25000 over the next 40 years, okay, let's say you win, you're the winner of the AGT uh, at the age of 25. If you choose the first option, yeah, it means you'll receive $25,000 for the next 40 years up until you are 65. So you look like this, for example. Do you know who this is? Anybody knows who is this man here? Oh, come on. You should know this. Uh, I can't see the screen. <laughs> huh? You cannot see the screen? I'm I'm showing a PowerPoint. Can you see? You're not sharing book. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I forgot. Oh my goodness, I forgot to share the screen. Yeah, I just realized. I forgot to share the screen after Mentimeter quiz. Okay, uh, just example of practical usefulness and so on uh, that I discussed earlier on. Yeah, investment alternative, buying house, and so on. Uh, the closing. Lesson learned here, the big bag, and so on. So this is what I, uh, I told you earlier. Yeah. Uh, here, going back to our AGT example, first option, uh, $25,000 a year for the next 40 years. Let's say you win at the age of 25. If you choose this option, you will get the money yearly until you are 65. So it's going to look like this. Uh, you know who this is, right? Who's this? Oh, somebody mentioned in chat box. Tom Holland. Yes, thank you, Tom Holland. Who's Tom Holland, anyway? Who's Tom Holland? Actor. Yeah. What? 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 role is uh, he famous playing for he's an actor yeah peter parker yeah of course spider-man yeah in the marvel the the latest spider-man so you see here if he chose to receive twenty five thousand dollars per year over the next 40 years he'll uh, he won at the age let's say 25 here he's still very young very attractive and so on if he chose this option He'll receive the money over the next 40 years until he's old, yeah, until he is probably 65. Yeah. And there's a risk, yeah. What if in the middle of, I don't know, year 20, something happened to you? Yeah. God forbids, yeah, I don't know, he's he's dead or something, right? Because we don't know uh, the time. Yeah, we don't know when it's our time. Yeah. So there's a risk there. Yeah, perhaps he only received the money for the first 10 years after that we don't know what will happen and so on there's also a risk that probably the agt committee 
what if they suddenly went bankrupt? They don't have enough money anymore and so on. There could be a risk there if you choose this option. Yeah. Second option, uh, if you remember, second option means you receive the present value. Okay. Here, I'm not showing you any calculations of how these numbers uh, are generated. Yeah, it's behind the scene calculation. But approximately, if you choose to receive the $1 million in current value, in present value, you're going to receive only about $150,000 and, until $200,000 now. That's already net of tax. Yeah, remember if you got prize money and so on, you have to pay tax to the government. Okay, so you'll see here the value of money decreases very much. One million in year, uh, 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 one million dollar that advertised. Yeah, but if you chose to receive it now, you only get hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars. If you choose option two, yeah. Of course, which option will you take? Uh, it's going to depend. Yeah, you have to. Oh, uh, you based on this information only. You cannot answer it yet. Yeah, because uh, you need to compare uh, apple to apple. Yeah, you cannot compare present value with twenty five thousand dollars over forty years. Yeah, you need to compare both present values. Yeah, but at this point, we're not going to do that because uh, you'll learn this later in probably second or third semester. This is just a hint. Oh, this is actually one of the topics that you will uh, learn later. Yeah, the time value of money concept, how it is used in practice, uh, how it, it, it can help you in making decisions uh, in real life scenarios. Okay, uh, some other issues will be de dealt with later in finance related courses. Yeah. So, annuity, yeah, I haven't discussed about that, amortized law and so on. Don't worry about these terms, you'll learn it in time later, yeah. Uh, some references that I used in this presentation. Uh, any questions that you would like to ask? Okay, um, I'm on time right now. Okay. Any questions you would like to ask of whether the topic is difficult or easy or? What? What's your feedback? Okay, I, I want to have some of you give uh, comments or give feedbacks about our session today. Is it too quick? Is my pace is too quick? Did I speak too quickly or what? Uh, miss? Yes? Uh, I have a question. Who is uh, asking? Uh, who's, who's speaking? Uh, Owen. Oh, Owen. All uh, right. Oh, yeah. uh, I want to ask related to time value of money. Uh huh. Uh, it's better to receive a large sum of money today or in the future. That's actually uh, you cannot just answer. Uh, I cannot give you an answer based on that information only. Uh, the guideline is to compare actually the present value of both alternatives. Usually we oh. use that approach. You need to find All out right. the present value of each alternative and by logic, you should choose the one that is highest. Uh, all right, I understand this. Okay, oh, so there's a question in the chat box. According to these three links, which book are we going to use? Oh, um, later you will be uh, informed by the lecturer. I'm not the lecturer for your finance course. Yeah, I, I teach this for non-accounting students. I don't know whether the book will be the same for you, account, uh, uh, finance students. I don't know whether the book maybe will be updated and so on. So I cannot answer it yet, yeah? Uh, but your, your lecturer will, will shortly inform you about textbooks and other sources, other materials later on, okay? Anything else? Any other questions? Not necessarily with, uh, related to the topic, yeah, but probably comments. Do you think using Mentimeter is helpful or I don't know. Uh, usually in my class, I use this, uh, sometimes I use this Mentimeter and as you can see, there's a leaderboard at the end. 
uh, I will download the leaderboard uh, and I will give points to the students that participated. And of course, higher marks, higher points in Mathematics will get higher uh, participation points. Yeah. So that's just to induce you to participate and to get to, to give your best effort to answering the questions. Because sometimes at the end, the final score, yeah, the participation point can help someone who is uh, who's having a, a, a near pass grade. Yeah, it is really helpful. But not all lecturers offer participation points. Yeah, it's going to depend on each of the lecturers. Any comments, any other questions? I think it is, uh, how do we contact you? Oh. Uh, you can contact me by email, as you can see here, I'm sharing here now, my screen here. There's my email address. Yeah, so perhaps if you have a question, you could ask me to my email. Anything else before the session ends? So this is just a teaser of a lecture. Yeah, and it's, uh, you've in, on Monday you've you experienced with Buyanti, or uh, yesterday with Pak Iksan, today with me. Um, so at least these three sessions can give you a feel of how uh, your online classes will be starting from next week. Yeah. Of course, uh, there are some challenges with online learning, but uh, this is a situation that we must deal with. And we must uh, get through together. Okay, so if you got no questions, uh, thank you very much for today's session. I hope you can uh, get an idea now of the value of money, but the more discussions about that will be discussed later in finance courses. Okay, so I'm returning the floor to Blessing. So what's the next session? So hopefully you could uh, jump in again, Blessing, thank you. Okay, uh, th thank you very much, uh, Miss, uh, for the session that you delivered to our brothers and sisters. That's yes, what thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. So uh, good luck for the new semester, your first semester. Uh, we do hope that you will have a wonderful first semester experience. And if you have uh, questions, you could ask the lecturer or your academic advisor. Uh, thank you. So I can leave now, right? Yeah, you are, you are free to leave. I'm free to leave. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you all. I'll see you uh, when I see you again.